Hey everybody, welcome to another episode here. Uh, the episode that you're about to see myself, uh, my buddy Zach and buddy Manny went moose hunting. Uh, the purpose of this hunt was actually twofold. One, it was for Zach to get a moose and second, it was for me to try out my new 4K camera. Uh, as you're going to see in the upcoming footage here, one of those was a semi-success. I did have some issues with the sound. So later on in this video, I'm going to fill in a couple of the parts with the narration. But that was just a simple mistake. My uh, microphone cord came unplugged and I plugged it back into the input instead of the output. But as you're about to see in this video, we still had a fantastic day's hunting. We covered a lot of ground. We uh, saw some great scenery. It was an area that I'd never been to before. So even though we didn't get a moose, it was still a fantastic day. Morning everyone, thanks for joining us. This morning I'm meeting up with my buddy Zach and Manny's going to do some camera work for us this morning. So Zach has a uh, bull only or calf moose license for the southern shore of Newfoundland. It's area 35 and we call uh, the area we're going to Cape Hand. So being a late December hunt, our plan this morning is that we're going to take our ATVs with us we're going to drive to the end of a woods road and then we're going to unload the ATVs and we're going to find some high points where we can do some glassing today and hopefully we can find the moose that we're able to take. Uh, another plan is we may also, if we can find some small clumps of trees, the moose are starting to herd up in those so we may try and push a few of those and see if we can scare out a bull or a calf. We prefer a bull, it's just a little easier a little easier to identify the calf sometimes this time of the year, getting pretty large. The temperature today is, it's supposed to be around minus one Celsius outside right now, and I think it's supposed to go up to a highs of uh, around three or four degrees, I think. The only issue we're probably gonna have today is gonna be the winds. Uh, it's not uncommon for it to be windy here, but I think today they're calling for Sustained winds of 30 kilometers an hour and gusts to 50. So that's going to play a little bit of havoc with the cameras today. And uh, as well, it's going to make the uh, shooting a little bit tougher. Time to go, Zach. Good morning. Fucking cold. It's a bitter morning. Are we going to lose this morning or uh, take this crowd? We've been driving now for about uh, 25 minutes. We're just driving through the town of Bay Bulls. Uh, we got about another, oh, I don't know, 25 minutes, I guess, 30, to stop and get a coffee before we get to our hunting area. We're headed to Capon Road in area 37. 36. I haven't actually hunted this road before. 36. 36, sorry. I haven't actually hunted this area before, so, uh, me and Zach had a look at the map there. He's been up here a couple of times, I think, haven't you, Zach? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice cabin road and then um, breaks down more into a, a quad trail and heads right into the Avalon Wilderness area. The moose are not going to be real uh, mobile this morning. They're not going to be moving around a whole lot and it's calling for some high winds this afternoon. So our plan is to find some good lookouts. We're going to do some glassing. And if we can find a few small groups of trees, we'll probably get Manny there behind the camera to do some pushing as well. See if we can scare out a uh, uh, bull moose here this morning. Do you want to get down and hook that up? Okay. My truck's on it. Minus six degrees and my battery's not that good here. So this morning, this is some of the stuff that you have to deal with. Unfortunately, it's all part of it. Once I get it going, the battery should be fine.
Where's that trail there I go? This so one here? We can head up towards the cabin here, which overlooks um, a bunch of bogs and it's a good vantage point. Yeah. Or we can continue straight into uh, Butler's Pond. And there are bridges on both of them? Yeah. Yeah. So we can check yep. them both out. We've got lots of time. You go and I'll follow you. All right. Perfect. So right here we had spotted our rough grouse on the road and the only reason that we stopped to chase it was because we were covering a lot of ground on the ATVs moose hunting so we weren't really concerned about scaring any moose by firing a shot and also uh, rough grouse are extremely delicious and I haven't had any yet this year so I couldn't pass up the opportunity to uh, shoot one and we were going to cook it for lunch, but as it turns out, I ended up bringing it home and I actually had it for supper that evening. And yes, it was absolutely delicious. Look at the view through these trees here. Yeah, wait till you get high. Oh yeah, it's... get up on these rocks. Yeah. So we just drove in the trail there for about a half hour, 40 minutes. I'm beat to pieces. I don't know about the two of them doubling on the quad. It's a pretty rough go there. But we're gonna walk up here now. There's a big lookout. We're gonna walk up here and have a look. See if we can spot a moose down on the marshes somewhere. Do they still come up here and use this cabin? Out this way, the trail loops around and brings us back down to where we uh, came from. So we go down to the, we're down to the lower country down here. Yeah, yep. And we'll circle back. Sounds good. Better chance today. The moose are probably going to be down in the lower country too, out of the wind, because yep. it's picked up here now to about 50. Well, up on the hill there, it's probably 40 km an hour winds up there. Yeah. I thought I just heard a shot in the distance actually.
In this part right here, we actually just happened upon this cabin and the owner, Tony Guest, was there. So he immediately came out to say hello, real nice guy, super friendly. He's giving us some directions here to where there was a couple of moose seen the day before we were there. Uh, there was actually five together, one of them was shot, so we were hoping the other four were still going to be in the area. His directions were really precise, so after he did that, he actually uh, invited us into his cabin where we went in. We had a little warm-up and a cup of tea, and we just kind of uh, told a couple of stories. Uh, he also invited us to use his cabin anytime, just stop in, see if he's there, and we're more than welcome to stay. Should we happen to get caught in that area in the dark, he said, feel free to come on in. Uh, when we were done there, we certainly packed up our stuff and we moseyed on our way to find those moose that he directed us to. So we're headed over to the cabins over here. There was a few moose seen there yesterday and one of them was taken. So I'm just gonna take my time now and keep looking around while we're, dry, while we're driving over. Because the moose are gonna be holed up in these clumps of trees today. So that's my plan. So we did find the spot that Tony gave us directions to where the moose had been seen. Uh, it's at this point here where we decided to stop. We're up on a pretty good hill. We've got a little bit of shelter from the wind. So we decided to stay here. We have our lunch and do some glassing. Uh, we did that, but unfortunately there were still no moose to be seen, even though the country that we were overlooking was fantastic moose country. So after we finished our lunch, we relocated to a new area. And right here, we're kind of sizing up a stand of trees. We decided that we were gonna try pushing this. So we walked around to the far side to see exactly how big it was and what the terrain was like. And once we got there, we separated. Zach and Manny went back to the side of the trees, which was the downwind side, actually, where we had packed our quads. And I left and made my way into the opposite side. And when they got set up, I walked back through, hopefully pushing out a moose. I'm gonna walk over here. These guys are going back to the bikes. So I'm going to give them about 20 minutes and I'm going to walk back to the bikes. So I just crested the hill on that side. That's where they separated. They walked back to the quads. I crested over the hill, I'm headed down the other side, and the quads should be right about that direction, according to the GPS. I'm not worried about being too quiet, because I want the moose to run out.
So here I'm just making my way back after exiting that uh, stand of trees. Walking through the middle of those trees, it was unbelievable how good moose country it was. But for some reason, there was absolutely zero sign of moose. There was no uh, moose droppings, there were no tracks, not even any old stuff. I was actually quite surprised by that, considering that we were in a relatively remote area. But I guess the moose just don't like it, considering there was no sign at all. So we decided to pack up. So we're back in the truck now, we've loaded everything up. It's uh, about 3.30 in the evening and the days get dark pretty quick here. So we decided just to head on back to town. We had a great day. I got to try out my camera. We explored some new country and uh, we got to hang out together. So it was actually a great day. There's never anything wrong with getting a day outside in the woods. Sometimes uh, just getting out there is enough of a success that you don't always need to harvest an animal. Although, I can't lie, it would have been nice to capture one on film with a new camera. Well folks, that just goes to show that uh, sometimes the best laid plans don't always work out. Uh, we did have a great day there on that hunt. It was fantastic getting to hang out with uh, Manny and Zach. But, uh, unfortunately, there were no moose. But on the other side of things, I got to try out my new camera. I got a Sony AX700 that I'm actually shooting this with here now. We got to uh, try that out and I learned that when I'm plugging in my microphone to make sure you put it into the output and not the input. That's kind of what happened with this video. So lesson learned and hopefully I won't make that mistake when it really counts. So thanks for watching everybody and make sure you stay tuned in and subscribe for some more upcoming videos. Uh, going forward in the future, I'm still going to continue posting some stuff here on Angling and Arrows. And as well, in case you missed it, uh, we've joined the pro staff team of The Real Deal on Wild TV with uh, Mark McNay. So we're hoping to uh, get some footage coming up uh, just after Christmas and hopefully it'll hit the air in 2024. That's the plan at least. So stay tuned everybody. Check out The Real Deal. Stay safe this winter everybody. Cheers. Apparently we got another quad issue here. He just turned his off and now there's absolutely zero power going to it. That's awesome. Oh wait now. He had the kill switch. <laughs> Does that sound familiar, Manny? No. <laughs>